The exact appearance of all graphics and visas, such as line weights, fonts, labeling, and other graphic entities is easily customized. Let's update the line style for the bundles. We select Edit, Style, Style Sets. We open the Harness folder, then the bundle, and select Graphics. Then update the thickness from 3 to 1. Click OK. Select All to select all the objects and then select Style. Apply Style and the bundle line style is changed to a thinner line. We select the Create Insulation by Bundle icon from the toolbar and double click one of the bundles. We create a name, Tape 1. Click the new button and select a spiral tape. We search for a part. Select the 20 mm red tape. Click Insert. For the distance between each spiral wrap, we will assign a value of 150%. We select the line style. Override the styling and choose a color. We repeat the same process, this time from the Add Insulation menu bar. Add an overlap tape, do a search. We select the green tape, click Insert. We define a distance between each spiral wrap of 90%. We select the line style, override the styling and choose the color. Notice the different line styles for the spiral and overlap insulation. We can define insulation across multiple bundle sections by using Select Nodes. We first select the Start Node and End Node. The system prompts to select the nodes in between, in the required order. We select each of these nodes, and when done, we press the Enter button. We give the insulation run a name, Tube 1. We select a fixed tube, do a library search, and add the gray tube. Again, we select the line style and give it a different color. To add a grommet, we can select Add Grommet from the toolbar, or in this case, use the Parts tab. If we know the part number, we can type in the first few characters. The filter returns the correct grommet. Right-click on the grommet and select Create Grommet. Pick a location on the bundle, use the Node Position utility, and give the grommet a name. Likewise for a clip, type in CL in the filter and select the required clip. Select Create Clip and place it between SP2 and SP3. Then give the clip a name to complete the addition of the clip. The inline connector still has the original default symbol that was created before we knew the correct part number. The Harness Synchronization step grabbed the correct part number from the wiring design, so let's now update the connector symbol. Right-select the inline, select Styling, and reselect Symbol. The default style facility in Visus can correctly lay out the connector graphics and tables, so select the connector and apply the styling to place the symbol in tables neatly. Let's zoom in on the wire table. Notice we don't have part numbers or lengths for the wires. Now select Action, Processing and Calculate the Wire and Multicore Lengths. Notice that all the wire lengths are defined. We select Actions, Processing. Select Wire Parts and all the wires are assigned part numbers, as shown by the orange check marks in the Design Browser tree.
Likewise, the wire table column is also updated. Notice that the wires belonging to the multicore are not assigned with orange check marks. So we select a multicore, right click, multicores, select the multicore, select edit, and from the library parts panel, we do a search based on the colors associated to the inner cores. The system returns two multicores part definitions. We will use one definition for the first multicore, and for the second multicore, we will select the other library part definition. Moving the cursor on any entity in the design browser tree gives us useful tooltip information about that part. VSYS generates several important reports describing the harness design, and these can be used to drive manufacturing systems and machines. The report format is defined in an XSLT style sheet, which you can customize to your design needs to create all the information you need. This completes the VSYS test drive. Thank you.